Hello and welcome to the Collaborative's show, Prevention Works. My name is Victoria Silsby and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator and Tobacco Coordinator for the Collaborative. Today we are here with Kathy O'Reilly, welcome Kathy, from the Vermont Department of Health Bennington County Office. Kathy is the Chronic Disease Prevention Specialist and School Liaison for Bennington County. We have an opportunity today to speak with Kathy about a strategic initiative that the Vermont Department of Health is working on statewide, which is to raise awareness um, amongst Vermonters on how tobacco companies are marketing and targeting to Vermont youth with regards to um, advertising and product placement. Kathy, Vermont has won the, uh, a significant distinction of being the healthiest state in the country for four consecutive years in a row. And with all the healthy activities that there are available for us to do in the state, from downhill skiing, Nordic skiing, boarding, hiking, uh, swimming in Vermont lakes in the summertime, one doesn't traditionally think of Vermonters smoking cigarettes and using tobacco products. To start the conversation today, Kathy, uh, could you give our viewers some background about what the state tobacco use rates are for both adults and youth and also the local at the local level? Absolutely, and um, I think it just goes to show that although Vermont is has received the designation of healthiest state in the country, the presence of tobacco in our society in the United States is pretty ubiquitous, so it's everywhere. Um, currently, our state smoking rates at the, at the state level, um, the smoking rate for adults is about 18%, okay? Um, that means 18 out of 100 people, adults, smoke. The teen rate is 13%. All these stati statistics that I am sharing with you come from either the YRBS, which is, which is the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which is administered every two years in, in all the supervisory unions in Vermont. Th those are st the statistics, um, we, that's, that's where we get our statistics for youth smoking. For adults, we use BREFSS, B-R-F-S-S data, <laughs> which is the Behavioral Risk uh, factor surveillance system, which is a telephone survey of about 6,500 adults. An adult is considered somebody who's 18 or over, and they ask about different, you know, tobacco use, chronic disease, um, mental health, you know, things like that. Sure. It's an anonymous telephone survey. So 18% for adults and 13% statewide in Bennington County, our ad uh, the adult rate is 21% and the teen rate is 13%. So that's great. We're at least on the youth level, we're on par with the state level, but it sounds like we're higher on the adult tobacco use rate. Right, 18 out of 100 uh, statewide, 21 out of 100. Now that result isn't statistically, statistically significant if you're looking at it from an epidemiological standpoint, but it's significant number th nevertheless because it's appro approaching a quarter of adults. You know, 25% would be a quarter of adults that smoke in Bennington County, and we're at 21% already. Sure. So um, overall, okay, if you look at the overall statistics, about 95,000 Vermonters smoke. Um, we know um, from uh, death certificates and things like that from data collection, that about 800 Vermonters die from tobacco-related illnesses each year. Um, the more sobering statistic, and this will get, as we go further along in the program, we'll address this, 88% of all adult smokers, okay, started by the time they were 18 years old. Okay? Wow. 88 percent. That's correct. Started before they were age 18. By the time they were 18 years old, they had started becoming daily smokers. In addition, okay, st throughout the United States, more than 3,000 youth smoke their first cigarette every day. And here in the state of Vermont, okay, over 400 Vermont youths under the age of 18 become daily smokers every year. Wow. 
So for what I heard you say just now is that uh, 400 Vermont youth become smokers every year, and the adults that are reporting that they're tobacco users, 88% of um, that population started by the time they were 18. You're right, those really are sobering and st staggering statistics. They are, and so that is why the Vermont Department of Health um, unrolled its most recent anti-tobacco campaign back in October of 2014, a few months ago, called Counterbalance Vermont, okay? Counterbalance Vermont is designed, is a program that is targeting youth before they even start smoking. Your children are exposed to it without even realizing and without your consent. They see it when their friends want a snack or when they join you for a quick stop along the way. They see tobacco advertising all the time in Vermont retail stores just like this. And the more your children see these ads, the more likely they are to use tobacco when they get older. Visit counterbalancevt.com to help end tobacco's influence on Vermont's kids. So tell me a little bit more about this Counterbalance Vermont initiative. What, what are some of the um, highlights of the campaign? Well, Counterbalance Vermont is um, a program which is um, really um, sort of addressing uh, the big tobacco, the big tobacco companies, where their pocketbooks are and where they spend their money, which is in advertising. And the reason they advertise, spend so much money on advertising, as a matter of fact, they spend about $8.8 billion, $8 billion every year. About, that's about an average of $24 million per day to market their products. And the majority of this advertising happens right in the stores where they're selling the product. And the reason they do that Okay, and it is because they're targeting youth. And by the way, um, tobacco companies do not refer to youth as youth. They refer to them as replacement smokers. Oh, that's a terrible name. Um, so I think it's important to tell our viewers that this initiative um, is really to counter the tobacco companies' initiatives and what they're doing. The stores themselves really don't have any control, is my understanding, around product placement. The, the whole tobacco um, scene that we see in stores is really driven by the contract that stores have with the tobacco companies. Can you share that? Sure. There are about a thousand re tobacco retailers in Vermont right now, okay? And the tobacco companies spend about $18.4 million um, per pro to market their products in Vermont. So that's about 18, if you, if you look at that, it's about $18,000 per retailer. That's a lot of money. And it's not just the money. I mean, they, they give, they, they use this money um, to provide incentives and directives to the retailers who want to sell the product. And they're very, very prescriptive about how it's done. Um, they they t actually, they tell, they, they will tell um, if a retailer wants to have a contract with a certain tobacco um, retailer, not retailer, but a tobacco company, like Philip Morris or RJR Reynolds or whatever, they are told exactly what they need to do, where the product needs to be placed, how it needs to be advertised, what the pictures are. It's very, very, very prescriptive. Sure. Um, how, how can, um, what are some of the, the initiatives that our viewers might have already been seeing with regards to this um, initiative on helping kids counter the marketing efforts? Well, the first step in countering the marketing effort is to raise awareness about the marketing effort. Because you may walk into a retail store and see a 
power wall, what the tobacco companies call a power wall. Is this what you're talking about? That is about? a power wall. And if you walk into any into any retailer that has a contract with these tobacco companies, you will see that they have the, everything. It, it is like literally an entire wall behind the counter in the register of tobacco products. And where each one is placed and at what level it is placed in the power law power wall is prescribed by these these tobacco companies okay so while i'm holding That's this one up, thing they do so while i'm holding this um sheet up that sort of depicts a power wall perhaps you can tell our viewers what some of the things um the tobacco companies are looking at okay well Again, you can see, this is a close-up, and so you can see the placement. And this isn't just random. This placement is, the retail, the uh, tobacco company will say, you will put our brand here. Sure. You will, and they provide incentives, money, discounts, things like that, to ensure that that happens. Okay? Sure. Or even they will not give you a contract if you don't agree to that. Okay? Um, in terms of other things that tobacco companies do, I want you to pay, want you to take a look at this. This is a case which is selling a new phenomenon, electronic cigarettes. If you look, if you could look at this more closely, you'll see that they come in different colors: pink, green, blue. They're oh, very oh pretty and different flavors. And note that they are placed right next to candy. That's what kind of flavors accident. do they come in? Apple, bubble gum, cinnamon. You name it. They have all different kinds of flavors. Uh, those kind of flavors don't really sound like flavors that adults would typically use. No, they're not. And again, it's next to the candy. And by the way, it's right at this child's eye level because they are targeting youth. Wow. So I've heard something about um, product placement being at eye level or within that three foot height. And that's the reason why I've never really understood it's to reach out and hook, so to speak, the youth. The youth. British American Tobacco said it, and I quote, eye level is by level. Oh, that's so sad, really. Um, here's another slide that's part of the campaign, and it talks about um, how often children are exposed to tobacco ads, the more likely they are to start smoking. Well, again, you see we have our electronic cigarettes and over here would be the candy machine. And by the way, sometimes it isn't can a candy display. It might be a slushy machine. And we all know who drinks slushies. Slushies are not generally an adult drink. They're sure. a, a, teen, a teen or a preteen drink. Um, look at this right here, real flavor, okay? Buy one, get one. That's an example of a price promotion. Okay, buy one, get one free. Or sometimes they'll say, buy one, get a backpack. Buy one, get a, you know, whatever. A t-shirt or right. something. Or if you buy multiple packs, you'll get a discount. You'll get, you know, a certain percentage off. Because the tobacco, tobacco companies know that price, $6.36 on average for a pack of cigarettes, okay, is, is in many cases the deciding factor for people. And so they want to try to make it um, economically worth it to somebody to smoke. Sure. So there's, um, we talk a lot in the prevention field about who has the most influence on youth. And um, some people, there's a misnomer out there that say, well, it's actually peer pressure, when in actuality, um, parents have the greatest influence, positive influence over their youth. But in this um, slide, it really shows that with all this tobacco advertising, who has the most influence over our youth is the tobacco advertising. That is correct. You know, the 2012 Surgeon General's report um, concluded that there was scientific ed evidence that consistently and coherently pointed to the internet intentional marketing of tobacco products to youth as being a cause of youth, youth's tobacco use. And believe it or not, um, it is true that tobacco retailing is more powerful than peer pressure. Wow, that's pretty scary. So we've talked a lot today about um, product placement and what um, people see at point of sale, and that's inside the store. What happens outside of the store? Well, that's 
interesting that you should ask because what we saw inside the store, I think, is fairly impressive. And if you, if you go into a, 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 a retail store in the future, be aware. Just take a look at what it looks like behind the counter because you'll see what I mean by a power wall. So it's pretty impressive when you walk through the door. But before you even walk through the door, at the gas pumps on the side of the store, kids are inundated with this kind of advertising. And by the way, look at how these are placed right between a gallon of milk and we accept EBT and SNAP manufacturer coupons. That's not an accident. That is intentional. Wow. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of colors here. I'm seeing um, bright wording. Um, Look at here, an advertisement for Winston, for Camel, right next to an advertisement for a slush puppy. Slushy, yeah. So one of the things that I know that some towns do is they limit their outdoor or window signage. And that, to me, um, it sort of creates a, po a po positive, excuse me, positive and powerful message from the t on the town level that's saying we're here to help create a healthy community. Well, it also takes it, you know, because the tobacco companies put a lot of onus on the retailers with these, you know, with these prescriptions about, you know, where the product is placed with price promotions, discounts and things like that. And saying, you know, I will withhold, you will not be able to have a contract with RJR or you will not be able to sell Newport if you do not agree to these um, conditions. And when towns pass ordinances and promote policies um, like this, it takes it out of the arena of the retail owner himself and it becomes something that the town is prescribing. Sure, um, but that's not to say we, you know, there are some towns in our immediate vicinity that have sign ordinances, but we don't have to travel very far from the Manchester Dorset mountain communities s where we might readily see some of this outdoor product um, advertising. Exactly. Kathy, you've given us a lot of information today, and it's really exciting to know that the state of Vermont is really um, leading the way, probably one of the few states in the country, to look at prevention right from the start, um, really in its truest form, as just one component of reducing and preventing tobacco use. And this has just been one example of how the state um, a new direction for the state because the state has already um, worked with raising cigarette taxes. It's looked at creating smoke-free entryways um, or entrances, and I know this community has been successful with some of the um, companies in doing that, such as the town of Dorset, Manchester, Price Chopper, um, created a huge smoke-free entryway a few years ago. Um, what are some of the other ways that the state has looked at um, decreasing tobacco use? I think there was a new act or something mm -hmm. this summer well, that was passed. It's interesting, you know, you talk about the smoke-free ordinances and you talk about um, smoke-free entryways and smoke-free campuses and things, and that's addressing, um, that's really addressing the population that always already smokes, okay? And by the way, I want you to know that um, tobacco places a massive burden on the Vermont economy in that we spend about $348 million in direct health care expenditures because of smoking. So these initiatives are really targeting people who smoke. Act 135, which was passed this summer, which is um, an act that prohibits smoking in an enclosed space, a car with children um, in, in, from nine, nine and under, okay? Um, and it also, I believe it has a component um, about the schools. You yes, know, I think they redefined what um, a tobacco product is so that they've expanded the definition of, pro of tobacco product to include electronic cigarettes. And those two can no longer be used on a school or daycare campus. Right, exactly. And so that's an example of targeting uh, a population that is not smoking yet. Okay, it's addressing secondhand smoke in the, in the case of the smoking in, in the car. Sure. Okay, it's, it's addressing the, the case of secondhand smoke because secondhand smoke is dangerous as well. Um, and counterbalance is actually different than the initiatives that we've had in the past. 
one more time again because we are trying to prevent um, smoking before in a population before it even begins. That's because just once so starts, exciting to be really working right from the get-go in true definition of prevention. Exactly, because once a person starts smoking, and you know as well as I do, it is the most difficult addiction to kick. I've heard it takes on average um, to have about seven attempts to have a successful quit. It, it's true. It is one of the um, most difficult addictions. It, it's overcome. very, very difficult to overcome nicotine addiction. Well, it sounds as though all the action steps that have been taken over the past several months have had a broad outreach um, throughout our community and audience. And the campaigns have used a variety of mediums because I believe this is on television. I believe this ha is social media. There have been some print ads. There's also been um, some press releases and letters to the editor. Kathy, what else needs to happen with this initiative? How can families and community members um, get involved? Well, the first thing you can do is Counterbalance actually has a um, website, www.counterbalancevtforvermont.com. Okay, and if you go to counterbalancevermont.com, you will see all the um, pictures that we shared today. Um, also, there are um, uh, links to the different prevention coalitions that exist in different geographic areas of the state, like the Collaborative up here in the North Shire, like ACT or the Alliance for Community Transformations down in the South Shire, down in Bennington. Mm -hmm. Okay, So there are links um, where you can access um, contact information of these coalitions, as well as um, what their initiatives are um, in terms of tobacco prevention. We also have, the state has two um, programs that operate within the schools. Um, there's a high school level tobacco prevention program, tobacco, yeah, tobacco prevention program, known as OVX, Our Voices Exposed. Um, there is actually a local OVX at BBA. Um, there is a, there's not an OVX uh, group at Mount Anthony down in Bennington, but they do have a program called the Youth Ambassadors, which functions in a sort of OVX kind of way. Sure. Um, and I think that there's a, a middle school youth group called VCAT. VCAT. V K-A-T, Vermont Kids Against Tobacco. And that is the same thing as OVX, except it targets uh, fifth, uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. That's great. Um, so we talked earlier about parents having um, the greatest influence on their youth. How can parents have these conversations with their youth about what they're seeing? Well, the first thing is to visit Counterbalance Vermont and to take a look at the um, the marketing strategies that tobacco companies use in the first place. Because believe it or not, I'm involved in prevention work and I've been a nurse for years, but I myself didn't even realize some of the tactics that these tobacco companies use. And when you develop, an, you know, they say knowledge is power. When you develop an awareness, okay, you are much more likely to impart that prevention knowledge to your kids. So it's important to have conversations with your kids. That sounds like a great dinner conversation to get on the Counterbalance Vermont website and then talk about it at a meal time about what kids are being exposed to and how families can unite against that. Well, exactly, you know, and again, my mantra is all with my own children and with, I, I taught for many years, is knowledge is power. You share that information with the kids so that they know that they are being targeted. Kathy, I really appreciate you being here today on, our, on the Collaborative's Prevention Work Show. It's been a pleasure and really, really informative. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.